Well, hello again, everyone. Today we get to explore 12 tone music further. Behold the following tone row. All 12 notes are present here. Let's listen to it once, because why not? pretty straightforward. It is an aggregate, contains all 12 pitches. Let's look at the pitches here. Let's assign them numbers, let's say. So we start with 0, of course, for middle C. We'll be using C here. So we will address them. G sharp is, of course, 8. F sharp is 6. E is 4. E flat would be 3, B is 11, A is 9, G is 7, F is 5, e, D flat is 1, D natural is 2, and B flat would be 10. So the We'll call this the prime form, so the P0 form of the row is 0, 8, 6, 4, 3, 11, 9, 7, 5, 1, 2, 10. So if we want to find a little shortcut for looking at all possible row forms, and how many possible row forms would there be? Well, let's think about this. There's P0 form here. How many different ways can I transpose this? Well, I can transpose it so it starts on 1, in which case we would have 1, 9, 7, 5, 4, 0, 10, uh, 8, 6, 2, 3, 11. You can transpose it so it starts on 2, 2, 10, 8, 6, 5, 1, 11, 9, 7, 3, 4, 0. Transpose it so it starts on 3, so forth and so on, and then Eventually, I'll have 12 different transpositions, P0 through P11. I would then also have 12 R forms, because the R form would, of course, a P0, R0 would be 10, 2, 1, 5, 7, 9, 11, 3, 4, 6, 8, 0, running this backwards. Um, and I could transpose each of those, or take the retrograde of each of the transpose forms. So that's another 12, so that's 24. And then I could invert this. 0, 4, 6, 8, 9, 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, 10, 2, and transpose that inversion a grand total of 12 times, and then run the retrograde of the inversions, so that's another 12. So we have a grand total of 48 possible row forms. Well, how do you keep track of all those? Well, let me show you a little device. Schoenberg created this. Uh, we start by building a 12 by 12 square. And if I put the numbers in here. We use E for 11 and T for 10. We see this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to perform various operations on it and I'm going to create what's known as the matrix. So let's take the red pill, shall we, and create the matrix. Don't worry, I have a landline right here in my office so we can get out if we need to. The way you create a 12-tone matrix, there are a couple different ways to do it. You start with the P0 form in the top row. And then you're going to want zeros all the way diagonally from top to bottom. So Go ahead, if you start with zero, then you can put zeros in all the way around. There are transpositions you can do where you start with a different row up top, but then you use that number all the way down diagonally. This allows you to keep track of things. And you can build this strictly by transposition, or you can build it strictly by inversion, or you can build it by a combination of the two. 
Let's start by inverting this, since we have the diagonal of zeros in the P0 form. You're going to write the inversion from top to bottom. So P forms are read uh, left to right. I forms are going to be read top to bottom. So to get inversion, you start with the corner here and you work around. So 0 to 8 if I invert around 0, so I went up 8, so I have to go down 8, which is the same as going up 4. 6 and 6, 4 becomes 8, 3 becomes 9, 11 becomes 1, 9 becomes 3, 7 becomes 5, 5 becomes 7, 1 becomes 11, 2 becomes 10, and 10 becomes 2. So this is the P0 form of the row right here. 0, 8, 6, 4, 3, 11, 9, 7, 5, 1, 2, 10. And the I0 form of the row is 0, 4, 6, 8, 9, 1, 3, 5, 6, 11, 10, 2. Now I know where all these forms start. So what I can do is I can then transpose based on the starting pitches here. So P1 would start here. So let's build P1. So we're going to transpose everything in P0 up 1. We're going to place it here because 1's here. Just we'll place it. So 1 plus 8 is 9. 1 plus 6 is 7. 1 plus 4 is 5. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 11 is 0. We can confirm that with our di diagonal. 1 plus 9 is 10. 1 plus 7 is 8. 1 plus 5 is 6. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 10 is 11. And then we can go down to the 2, and we can move up 1 from there. So 1 to 9 becomes 2 to 10, 8, 6, 5, 1, 2, 11, 9, 7, 3, 4, 0. And you notice that already placed there, so it works. Go up to 3, 11, 9, 7, 6, 2, 10 becomes 0, 8 becomes 10, 6 becomes 8, or 4. And I can also say, well, 1's next to 3, so I can just add 2 to the 1 to get 3, and that works out pretty well. Uh, 4 is up here. And you can go through and you can do this. At this point, we can start you know, doing transpositions of the inversion as well. So, so I'm going to do that, so 1. 3 becomes 1, 4 becomes 5, 6 becomes 7, 8 becomes 9, 9 becomes 10. We can confirm 1 becomes 2, 3 becomes 4, 5 becomes 6, 6 becomes 7, 11 becomes 0, 10 becomes 11, and 2 becomes 3. And we can then, you know, you'll get better at this as we go along here. It, it does start to get a little faster. Seven, eight, zero, one. Let's see, it's confirmed there. Uh, and we can do this a variety of different ways. This is gripping cinematography. I know this is going to win an Academy Award for something. I can just feel it. But no matter how you do it, you can go through and you can then build through all of these. So if we wanted to go back to transposition, five is down right here. So. And you might see certain patterns starting to develop. Anytime you have a, the whole step here, you'll see a, a little pattern developing. And that's fine. Uh, six is right here. So we just build off of that. Oops. We have an issue here. I've clearly put the wrong number 
somewhere where I wasn't supposed to. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, ten, seven, six to. We might have. I, I see the problem is. I hit six instead of seven there. That makes more sense. Oh, seven to two. That makes sense. Nine, two, ten, three, eleven, four, zero, five, one. That means six is actually up here. And that happens. It, it's there's a lot of numbers to keep track of. So you when you find yourself, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, go see where the problem is. In this case I had struck six twice. This is actually a seven. My six line is here. So then I correct accordingly. So now I'm adding two to everything here essentially. Now I have my seven line, and that makes more sense. Again, you can transpose by skipping around from one to the other, or you can uh, just go with whatever is adjacent, and it should line up pretty well. The way this row form is set up, it's a very uh, consistent row. The first uh, couple of tetrachords all involve whole tone construction, so if you're seeing some patterns here that's not by accident. And I've just got a couple of row forms left to get through here. So, uh, nine, five, two, six. And then the very last one as we plug in here. And if you look at this, now we have 12 by 12 matrix. All the P forms are read left to right this way. All the R forms are read right to left this way. So this is P6, 620, 10, 9, 5, 3, 1, 11, 7, 8, 4. And it's also R6, 4, 8, 7, 11, 1, 3, 9, 5, 9, 10, 0, 2, 6. All of the I forms are at top to bottom. So I11 would be 11, 3, 5, 7, 8, 0, 2, 4, 6, 10, 9, 1. All of the RI forms are read bottom to top. So RI11 would be one nine ten six four two zero eight seven five three eleven. This is a good introduction. We'll talk about all the various properties and we'll also talk about how to find row forms without using matrix, but being able to construct a matrix is an important skill. So in the meantime, create tone rows, create matrices, get plenty of practice in, and I will see you in class. Thanks as always for watching. Have a great day.